open my Skype, Abdullah. Are you sure? Okay, Abdullah, I will open Skype just for you. You sound, you sound interesting. All right, I'm opening my Skype. Okay, Abdullah, uh, send me a text message, my friend. <coughs> hey, Abdullah, send me a text message. Already my Skype is open. I'm waiting for you. Are you there? Oh, this is you? Okay, love my Allah. This is you, Abdullah? Okay. Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on here. What do you want to say to us? Uh, it's too late and you're streaming still. But this is the, so you are calling me to say to me it's too late no i want to tell you that you are so obsessed with my prophet why my friend i am obsessed with the truth i want to save the muslims so it's imagine if now it is for me 2 13 a.m in the morning and i save a muslim from going to hell isn't it amazing instead of going and sleeping and snoring so let me save you what do you think about what we are saying I know that's amazing if you are really truthful that you are here to save a Muslim. Yeah, but why, why I'm here? Why I'm here? Are you paying me to say to, to talk to you? Did I, did you pay like any? Oh, no, no, not what I'm saying. Huh? So why? So so what I'm getting from talking to you now? What is the benefit for me? If that's what you are doing, mm -hmm. then it's good for you. Okay, but let me ask you. As long as we mention this. Shall I charge people to talk to me like now you are calling me or I should not? I should talk to everybody if I'm a good person. Yes, you should talk to everyone. Okay, so why your prophet he will not talk to anyone unless he pay him? Okay, we'll get to that, but... No, no, we get this to that now. Why your prophet will not talk to anyone unless you pay him? I don't know what are you talking about. Show me. Don't, don't tell me why you're talking about. I'm asking you, is it true that your prophet will not talk to people, individual, unless they pay him? Yes or no? I don't know about that. Show I don't me. care if you know or not. I'm asking you, is that good or bad? I don't know the context. Show me. If I read it, I will know. I will tell you before, you know, okay, I'm asking you, is that bad or good? I mean, you need to don't know. Is it right that I will not talk to you unless you pay me first? Look, I cannot say right or wrong. Why not? Because there has to be, if my prophet uh, asks for money to talk, yeah, then there has to be a reason for it, you know. Because okay. so what why what is the reason that I want to talk to you? You will not talk to me and you are a prophet unless I pay you first. You know, I think you are lying because Allah said this prophet does not ask you for any money. Okay. So I'm asking you why your prophet then he will not talk to you or to me or to anyone unless you pay him first. I don't believe because Allah says uh, my prophet never asks money. Okay, I'm asking you again. You don't believe, but are you saying to me that this is, will be a contradiction? I have to see what it's about, you know. I have to No problem. Know. I'm asking you again. Are you saying that there's no... You just said no way the prophet will do so. That means this is bad. No, it does not mean it's bad. It... So what you just said, no, you know, there was no way the prophet would do that. No, I said, Allah said he doesn't. Well, you said, I think you are lying. 
Why you say to me I'm lying if it's normal to do that? What make you think that this is a lie unless it is an embarrassing? No, why I'm saying is because... Read for me chapter 58 verse number 12 and don't waste my time. Uh, what did you say? The chapter? 58 verse 12. Okay, all you who have believed when you privately consult the messenger present before your consultation a charity that is better for you and pure, but if you find not, then indeed. Okay, Allah is not like forcing everybody. Mm. You see, Allah is saying, but if you cannot give it, then mm. Allah is forgiving. Ah, okay, but this is make it a sin. Like, you know, when you go now, if you want to talk to the Prophet and you don't have anything in your hand, Allah will forgive you. No, Allah is all merciful. He's, he's, he's making them feel guilty. So you have to bring something to him. And you will see here it says in a private consultation. So you're a Prophet. He have a clinic. He, have, he opened a business. You want to talk to me in a private, you have to spend some money first. It is for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah, you have to give it to Muhammad. What sake of Allah? You have to yeah. give it to Muhammad. Allah's religion. What? To help Allah's religion, he, he has to give some money. People why, have to... why Allah don't give him money? Isn't it Allah is God? Isn't yeah. it Allah he can open rivers of gold and silver to Muhammad? Why Allah he need to beg for money asking Muslims, the poor Muslims, to give Muhammad their money? Allah can do all of that, but Allah... No, he cannot. Prove it. Here we go. You just said that Muhammad, you need the money. Let me, let me, let me ask you, did Allah ask the Muslims for a loan? Yes, that's... Okay. Why, that's... Allah, why Allah is asking for a mortgage, a loan? Okay, let me explain to you. You see? Mm, you see. Say, it's same with how Jesus, you guys say, he came to the world humbling himself, right? Mm-hmm. My Allah is humbling himself. Humbling himself by borrowing money from the Jews? Your prophet, did your prophet borrow money from the Jews according to you Muslims? Uh, I mean, he, he, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? It looked like you know nothing. Did he? Well, this is what you Muslims say that the prophet, yeah, he borrowed money from the Jews. Okay, so what are you trying to prove from that? Well, I'm trying to say that your prophet is taking money from everybody and Allah is not providing him. And Muhammad is making verses from the Quran just to collect money to the point Allah is saying, who who give Allah a, a beautiful loan so Allah will double it for him. Secondly, if Muhammad took a mortgage from the Jews, that means he paid interest and that will not make him a prophet of God for he himself practicing something against God teaching. What kind of a prophet he pay interest by taking a mortgage from a Jew? A Jew will not give you the money for, for nothing. It's not a charity. He's doing a business. So Muhammad take a money from the Jews. He is paying interest. Muhammad, he is seeking money. He asks people. He says, if you give me money, Allah will give you a corner lot in heaven. So Muhammad is a fraud. Wherever he go, he want to take money. Did he, pay, did he pay back the Jews? No, he killed him. He took the money and then he killed them later. So you're a prophet. This according to you that he borrowed money. I believe. I don't believe in this garbage. But here you see that Allah keep in the Quran saying, who want to give Allah a, a beautiful loan? Why Allah, he need a beautiful loan? Cannot Allah open all the money and the, the sources to Muhammad? Can't he provide him? Don't you, don't the believers say, you know, God is our provider? Who is the provider of Muhammad? Who is the provider? Yeah. It's Allah. Like no, even if you. Allah himself is begging for money, how Allah is his provider? That's Allah motivating his slaves. Oh, so, to, he, so if, Allah, he motivate his slave, so, but he cannot give money. Allah himself, he cannot give money to Muhammad. Did he give him money? Whoever gave him money. What do you mean whoever? Why Allah saying, give a mortgage to Allah? Okay, let me explain. Explain, go ahead. 
since my ally by the way I, I noticed that you are the smarter between all your brothers you are the only one kid in the family right yeah 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 this is why you are the smarter between all the brothers okay go ahead yeah yeah genius okay. continue go ahead like those people whoever gave money right to my prophet they gave it because allah told them so it's basically they are giving because allah asked for money Mm. So my prophet is getting that because of Allah's order. You see, mm. see that's how Allah provides. You don't see the wisdom. You oh. don't see the beauty of Islam. Ah, oh, okay. And Allah said, "I will give you seven hundred times more on the day of judgment." <laughs> and okay, well, hold on, hold on. okay. So Allah will give you seven hundred times in the day of judgment. What you will do with the money in the day of judgment? Not money. What he will give you then? He will he will give seven hundred times the reward. What is okay seven time reward? What what is that? That's gonna be seven hundred times more status in Jannah. What does that mean? You see, there are different levels in Jannah. What does that mean? <laughs> Meaning, let me explain to you. One level in Jannah, the That's difference it. is, uh, let's say. I am in a lower level and my father is in upper level than me. Okay. So I will be looking at him like how you guys look at star. That's how far he will be. Okay. And what what does that mean? I mean, okay, you told me that he is now he is far, but this is not good because you will not see your dad no more. What is the what is oh. the what kind of reward this reward is? So now you are you and your and your father in heaven, but you are in the floor. He is in the front floor. Hey, dad, do you hear me? No, you eat it. I cannot hear you. I'm so far. What, what? I just gave you an example. You, you, okay, this is your example, not my example. Your example is funny and stupid. I asked you, you said 700 more time reward. And you said to me, it's a, there, is, there is devil. But what you would do in those devil, what you would get? Is it true that Allah will give you 80,000 little boys in heaven to do things to you? Those are slaves. Okay, why you need the slaves in heaven? What they would do exactly to you? Allah, Allah will make us kings in our Jannah, you know? Oh, Allow okay. but us feel like we are king. Okay, uh, what? Okay, what? Okay, what? What the slaves will do? Explain to me. They will give us whatever we want. Like they will serve us with food. So those you need eighty. How many sandwiches you will eat a day? It depends on what how that place will be. You see. Uh, okay, but hold on. Is okay. it, isn't it your God, Allah? He says. Even the Hadith says. If you look at the bird in the sky, it's going to be in your dish right away, so there's no need for a servant. Isn't it? Your Quran says that your clothes will never wrinkle, will never be worn, which means you do not need laundry, you do not need to take a shower, and the food, even the trees will go down to you. So what the servants for? They will do nothing. What those servants are doing? No, those servants uh -huh. are there uh -huh. for specific time. They will bring food at specific time but, uh, your God Allah he just told you that the food will come to you nobody need to bring it to you yes that will come but that does not mean that the slaves will not do what they're supposed to do okay hold on can you describe for me first the slaves describe them for me by the way you are the smarter again between all your brothers and you said you are the only brother you are the kid in the family and you agree that okay so describe for me exactly how those slaves look like and what their age. Is it true that they are kids, little boys? I mean, they are young. How young? Described, I don't know the exact number. Why you don't know? They are young. They are like maybe physically strong, young, you know? Strong. Uh, you like them strong? No, I'm not saying that, but... What do you mean yeah. you're not saying that? You are being dirty yeah. now. Like, look at you. You said they are strong. What they will do exactly? What do you mean? You see, you always have this uh, evil mentality of you're, taking you're, things. But, you're, but because your Quran says that those kids, those boys, they will never bleed. Those boys will what? Will never bleed, bleed. Okay. Why they will not bleed? They are strong because they are strong. That's how beautiful Allah made them, you know. What what the beauty have to do with the bleed? They are boys. Women they bleed, but why boys will bleed from what? 
I don't know. You, you should know what context are like. No, you think. tell me. You are the Muslim who you, you are the only smart person I, in the family I, between totally, all your brothers and your, your mom. She have only one son anyway. So you are the genius and you are saying to me that those people, they will not look the Muslim. They translate the word bleed that they will not get drunk. Are they going to drink with you? Oh, so it's actually a drink. But the, the boys will drink with you. You will be drinking with boys. Or they are servants. I mean, if they are, they are servants, but if, if we want them to eat with us, they will. Uh, okay, but here in Arabic it says, they will not bleed. So why they are saying they will not get drunk? Okay, so every single translation says drink and not bleed. Hmm. So why, they are, why it says here, you know, so are they mean so they mean that they will not bleed from drinking if if that arabic word is actually bleed then i would have to ask somebody why uh, instead of like writing bleed why okay, let me ask you let us let us let us take it uh, here it says here that those boys around them they are youth and in different verse, it says that those youth are very white. Why they have to be white? Why they are so white? They are the same as lulu. Lulu mean, uh, you know, like uh, pearls. They are so white, like pearls. Why wow. they are? Why they are so white? Uh, you see, when you will see how a pearl looks like, yeah. beautiful, yeah. shining bright. Okay. Then so, you will see its beauty. Allah is describing them how they will be in beauty. So you like a beauty. You like you like pretty boys around you. No, that's not what I'm saying. But you, Allah, you are the one Allah who said, is beautiful. Okay. Every part of His is beautiful. Okay, you say that they are young males. They are very very pretty, and they are pretty like pearls, right? Do you agree with the word pearls with the Quran? Yes. I okay. Do. What 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 does that mean by saying pearls like pearls? Pearls means like a diamond, you know, like a Pearls rare. Pearls is not diamond. Pearls is uh, very white. Yeah. Okay. So why they are extremely white? I mean, what what that pleasure will give you? What what is special about it? And why they are boys, by the way? Why they are not male, big male? Why they are boys? Uh, young young male servants, not young kids. No, it says boys. Gulman, gulman. Yeah, Gulman. Yeah, Gulman is boys. And what for adults? Rajol. Rajol? This this, yeah, this is why when Mary, she gave birth to Jesus, according to the Quran, it says he is a Gulam. You know, Gulam. So this Gulam is a very young, he is a child. So why a child he will serve somebody? How a child can serve anyone anyway? It's well, not like if you go if you go in the Quran, you will see the word Ghulam appear in many places in the Quran, and then he this is Mary, uh, uh, you know, uh, even the story of Abraham, the story of uh, uh, Mary, the story of Zechariah, etc., etc. It says that this is a Ghulam. How I'm going to have a little child, and uh, I am old like Abraham wife she said, uh, uh, and Abraham he said. So a Ghulam is having a child, a baby. So how the baby will serve you? Yeah. How the baby will serve you? Look, those are the things of afterlife, right? So yeah, you don't and, know the and, yet. And, and, okay, obviously you have no idea what you are talking about. So guys, after two, one hour, he come to the conclusion this is afterlife. For sure afterlife, we are talking supposedly about heaven. What's wrong with you? Listen, Abdul, focus on me. So. The, they are little boys and they are the one who need somebody to serve them. So how little boys can serve you when they are the one who need a servant? That's why I don't believe that they are little kids. You how know? old? How old they are? What do you mean they are not little? How old they are? They are at least adults. So why they are saying that they are very little young? It says young, well, young meanings uh, like not old, young. You know, ah, like, okay. I, I am 21 years okay. old. Those boys, Allah, Allah, uh, he created them just to serve you, right? Yeah. Okay. 
No, I mean, is that, I don't is, that, like, is that fair? Is that fair that to have a slavery in heaven? Do you support slavery in heaven? Is that justice that you are just sitting in your ass and there is 80,000 little boys serving you? Is that justice? Is that make God happy? What is justice? What those boys did? Justice is that God created a creation. Yeah, so you create you create them to abuse them? No. So, isn't it abuse? Do you like to be a servant too? Do you like to be a servant one of mine? I will go to heaven now and Allah will make you a servant. Is that something you like? Be honest. In the Akhirah, these people will serve uh, people of paradise. So these servants will actually feel proud. Oh my God, these are the people of paradise. That okay, why so? Okay, guys, those, the servant will be proud. They are serving Abdul for eternity. They are proud. I mean, look, look at the logic. Look at the stupidity. What, what did you what, what did you eat today? Do you do you like to be proud to serve me? I will give you a job. I'm going to convert to Islam, and I will ask Allah to make you my servant. Do you like that? Not in this world. Why not? Okay. Do you like to be my servant in heaven? If I didn't exist as a human and Allah created so me, so those just... boys are not a human. Who said they are human? So why you call them boys? Maybe Allah is just giving you an idea that they will be young boys, like young boys, you know. So when he say boys, they are not boys. They are what? Young plastic? Are they boys or they are not? But they are not going to be like us, free will people, you know. They are going to be <laughs> like angels. <laughs> okay, yes. you know, listen, listen. What, what is your Islamic sect? Are you, you are a Sunni? I'm a Muslim. What does that mean? Are you Sunni or not? I am somebody who follows uh, Quran and Sunnah. You you can call me Sunni, but I don't really Quran like Quran and Sunni? You are Sunni. Okay. So, because your prophet, he said that the Sun, the Muslims, there will be 73 sect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one is the one will go to heaven? The one which my prophet said Allah's hand is upon the ijma. Okay. And they will never ever be misguided until the day of judgment. That's wonderful. But isn't it Allah, he said too, that the most of people, they will not believe until they became mushrikeen, which means the majority, they will be mushrikeen. So how that will be the ijma? How stupid is that? If the majority, they will be mushrikeen. Go watch the video of Sheikh Asim. He will say to you that the majority of the believers of the Muslims they will believe, but they are mushrikeen. So the majority are mushrikeen, not the, the minority are, are, are the true believer. Even your prophet, he said that the Islam start as a small and will end as a small. So the ijma will happen if ijma happen that the majority and the majority, they are not the Muslim no more. Uh, is it true what, what you are showing right now on uh, this hadith that Jews were split 71 according to you? This is not according to me, this is according to your funny prophet. So, I think this is also going to happen right until the day of judgment, I think. Ah, uh, okay. And the Christian, there will be 72 sect, and the Muslim will be 73. So what Muhammad did, Muhammad, he was a failure, he is the, the worst. His, his religion is 73, 73 times divided. The Christian and the Jews, they are more successful to preserve their book then. Uh, uh, you see, I see. Yeah. Even though they are divided, mm. but my Prophet was shown. His, shown was shown what? Was shown all the prophets, and when he saw all the prophets behind them, were very few people. But when uh, he was shown his ummah, mm. he saw all of the heaven filled up. Mm. That's how many people followed him and went into Jannah. Oh my God. Oh my Allah. But look what happened now. If your prophet is saying the truth then, if the majority of people who will go to heaven is the Muslims, so how your prophet says the majority they will leave Islam? Isn't it the Muslim they say? And your prophet he says, Islam is start as a small and end as a small. 
Okay, I will explain to you that too. Explain to me. The end will be small. Hmm. Allah will take. Uh, you know, Jesus will come back. Okay. And when he will come back, it will be very near of end of time. But your prophet, he said that Jesus is already coming and that is the sign of the judgment day. Actually, your prophet, he said that, you know, uh, Jesus will come now and he will be imam between you, between you. Yes, but you are absolutely correct. But what you are understanding through it is wrong. What do you mean? You just said I am absolutely true. So your prophet, he confessed that Jesus will come in his lifetime. No, 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 no. That's where you're wrong. Hmm. Because, uh, again, repeat what you said. Jesus will come during the lifetime of and Muhammad. Imam will be within you, right? He will be within you, speaking to the people around him, right? Hmm. Yes, and we have other hadith explaining what that is. My Explain prophet, me. go ahead. Prophet said how great of a, a his uh, one of his kids will be, you know, his uh, member of his progeny, Imam Mahdi Don't go great. there, don't go. It says that Messiah, the Messiah will come between you, speaking to people in front of him, people in front of him, not generations to come. <laughs> you see, th this is why you have to be honest. See, when you ask me something, I try to be honest. Hmm. But you try, but you are not, you are saying. No, I am honest, obviously. Okay, but, but you just said you try to be honest. Look, I am honest. Okay, but so, I... okay, hold on. I'm asking you now for the last, I don't want to repeat myself. Is Jesus going to come during the time of Muhammad or after? Absolutely after. Absolutely after, okay. So if we show a hadith saying Muhammad, he said that, you know, uh, uh, he will come between you and he will be imam between you, speaking to people in front of his face. That means Muhammad is a liar, right? No, no, no. What do you mean no, no? So why Muhammad saying he will come and he will be between you, speaking to people in front of him? That's why you have to understand what we Muslims believe about that. What do you mean? You, so your prophet, he used the wrong language. He isn't, he's a, oh, are, okay. you, are you insulting your prophet? I, I, I smell something fishy about you. It, no, like, no. it sounds like you are trying to insult prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, trying to make fun of his belief. And you are not serious. I am saying to you, the prophet said, so you say to me, you don't understand. Which mean you are saying that when Muhammad, he say things is confusing. No, I am saying you guys don't understand it and you guys believe about it whatever you guys want to believe about it what, but what does that it, mean i'm asking you now is jesus going to come during the time and the life of the muslims in the time of muhammad no i said no okay when you say to me you don't understand you know what i'm talking about at least i said you don't understand but i understand do you understand what i understand that hadith that you showed me where my prophet said what glory will be of this ummah when jesus son of mary will uh, descend down okay and that will be amongst you amongst and... you okay what do you know the hadith do you know the hadith number i i don't know the hadith number but i have read it okay so but it says amongst you right yes okay what he would do amongst you who the Messiah, what he will do? When he will uh, descend yeah. uh, on two angels, subhanAllah, when he will come what, down. What he will do? When my Jesus, uh -huh. Christ, peace be upon him, yeah. when he will come down, already Imam Mahdi salam will be leading the prayer. So Jesus will say, it's okay, Allah has given this Ummah, this uh, glory that i will pray behind one of you so imam Mahdi salam will lead the prayer and your prophet he said that yes there is a hadith right you don't know okay no we will we will take one by one so can you give me the hadith about when jesus will come 
during the end of time obviously we don't have exact date no no i'm asking you the hadith the hadith is speaking about the end of the time let us see if the hadith says the end of the time or not can you give me the hadith near the end it's understandable that uh, obviously jesus because allah said in the quran jesus is uh, signs of day of judgment but muhammad he said that jesus liyushikna liyushik do you know what yushik mean no almost here yes okay. i will explain to you what almost means okay what does that mean because you see this world is just few thousand years hmm let's say a few thousand years are left for it to end okay and after that it's eternity so when you compare this few thousand years to eternity obviously my prophet is gonna say almost but he said he did not even say almost he said the yushikna yushikna is very no, extremely no, soon no. and did he say among you yes okay you who you mean umma no he's speaking to people in front of him am um, you see that that's where you see christian prince i ask you to be very honest mm. you know exactly among you meaning umma and their hadith about imam mahdi which are no not problem he is speaking to people in front of him right did he say in the future or he said soon will de will descend among you speaking to people in front of him did he say that he will descend among your generation, your children, or he said you? He said you, absolutely. Okay, so if I am saying to you, you are in front of me, and I say Jesus will descend amongst you, I am not meaning somebody will come 10,000 years after. Amongst you, obviously, Sahaba knew that he was talking about uh, Sahab, uh, Sahaba's uh, generation, you know, until the end of time. So you, you have to add words to Muhammad, words so you can no. fix his silly statement right only sticking to this hadith you are not opening hadith which uh, my prophet clearly states about okay. imam give me hadith. give me the hadith which is a clearly state go ahead i have read it but i don't know the number you you sh you just type in imam mahdi it will come uh, imam mahdi so if we if we type imam mahdi now that will fix the problem mahdi open mahdi. Hadith. Why okay, don't you want let, to let me ask you who is an, who is this guy Mahdi? Wow, he is such a great person. Like why he is a great person? What he would do? What is he now? Is he born yet or not yet? Not yet. I mean, what do you he, mean not yet? I thought he is born already and he disappear. No, he he could be still on this earth. Like he he might be born, but we okay, don't know. Is, is it true that he is born of a woman and she gave birth to him from her thigh? Where did you get that from now? From the hadith. There's Which tons hadith? Of, there's tons of books about uh, the birth of, uh, uh, and not only I, that, especially the I, Shia, especially the Shia. Like Al Mahdi, when he fell down in his ass, he don't fart. You know, those are Shia hadith. I don't believe in any of them. Okay, so give me the hadith about Al Mahdi so we can learn something about him, something serious. You already know, but you're not opening from Sahih okay. Bukhari. And Show me, uh, give me, give me something to, to, to prove that this guy is, exists. I mean, this guy, even you Muslim, you say you claim that he is the grandsons of Peter, the disciple of Jesus. You Muslim are crazy. Tell me who is this guy, Al Mahdi. I want to know who is his father. I, no, no, not father and mother. We are only talking about Imam Mahdi. Who okay, he I'm is. asking you, who is this Mahdi, who his father is? Okay. Okay, let me tell you who he is. Let My me tell you, okay. Said, okay, tell on me. near the, you know, uh, near the day of judgment from yeah. my progeny. Okay, who, who is Al Mahdi? Who is Al Mahdi? Give me his father. Who is who is who is Al Mahdi? We don't know when he will come. We will know. <laughs> and my prophet, you know how important so Imam. He did not come yet. Allahu Alam. What do you mean he did not? He, he's go, he's go, he's he's a <laughs> guys. Allah, <laughs> is your Mahdi is from the twelve Imam or not? From the twelve Imam, yes, he will be an Imam. No, no, uh, is he from the twelve Imam after Muhammad? If he is from the twelve Imam, that's mean twelve Imam. They passed from long time ago. We are in the, we are one thousand fourteen hundred years after Muhammad. 
So 12 imam will be 12 generation. So what um, is the Mahdi? No, imam, I think he will be an imam, uh, the last imam, like near the day of judgment. Okay, my friend, the day of judgment, he said in front of you, Jesus will come among you. That is the day yeah. of judgment. Isn't it the Quran says the moon is split asunder and the judgment day is near? Yeah. Okay. So is it proving that the judgment already started because the moon is split asunder? Isn't it this is a sign of the judgment day? Yes, signs. My prophet himself was a sign. He said, uh, he said, uh, he, he, he put his two fingers and he said, I am to the day of judgment or we are like this close. All right. So you, you, you got your prophet busted. How, how close he is? He opened his finger, right? Yes. Okay. So how that can, how, how he can be a prophet then? If he say, this is how close we are and then never, you know, never happen. First, uh, we uh, we skip to a topic. First, talk about Imam Mahdi. Okay, and no, I will... We, we will go. We will talk about it. Don't worry. We have time. Did your prophet say to, a, you know, when I said to you that the Messiah will descend among you, you said this is about the future, right? Of course it's about, because all of the Sahaba knows what Prophet is talking about. Okay. Did your prophet say to a person in front of him that this child will not grow old before the judgment day comes? No, don't change the topic. I'm not. We are talking about it. Yeah. Same, the same thing. Here we go. Read with me. Read with me. Read. With me. Read. You are talking about that orphan girl. I'm. I, I'm talking about a person. He was in front of Muhammad, and he is a boy. He said that this person will not live until the judgment day come. He, which means he will not die. He will not even grow old. Which means judgment day will happen maximum 20 years, 30 years maximum. He's a boy. So he will not even. Then you recall haram. Haram is something somebody is 30, 35 and, and over. So this boy will not grow old till the last hour would come. And this is your private hadith in front of you. Read it. A young boy of Mughira bin Shuba. Is it Shuba? Happened as by. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and he was of my age. Hmm. Uh, thereupon, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if he lives long, he would not grow very old till the last hour would come. Hmm. How we can fix this one now? Now this one, I will, honestly, I will ask uh, to people of knowledge. Even what... this one need to ask people of knowledge? I mean, what's wrong with you? It's so clear. This boy will not grow old until the hour come. This boy, he is in front of him. Speaking about individual, we okay. know. Even, we even oh. know. We even know his father name. So this boy, the son of Al Mughira, or maybe the slave of Al Mughira, who care, he will not grow old until the hour come. So the maximum will be. Let us say this boy will live a uh, hundred year. Uh, 300 year you know what my grandfather this is a true story by the way he lived you know he lived for 10,000 years he was an, an antique I, we got him from the museum this is where my grandmother she got him so this boy would not grow old until the hour comes so how you can play with this game with me now you, you, you want uh, some duct tape because your prophet is leaking badly now no 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 I think what he meant this are wisdom even this one he meant something else he said this boy, he said this boy will not grow old until the day of judgment come. Even this one, he did not mean this. I think there is an explanation. For Muslim. sure there's an explanation. I mean, it's very easy. This boy will not grow old until the day of judgment come. <laughs> obviously, if I take it literally, then obviously day so of judgment. So what does that mean? This is not literally? <laughs> this is metaphorically, that, guys. <laughs> you see... On, if I'm honest, just like take, I, I just take a hike. Come on, I gave you time, I give you a chance to talk. You are silly. And the, the funny is, when I say to him, he, You are the smarter between all your brothers, and you are the only kid in the family, right? He said, Yes, <laughs> this will remind me when I, you know, uh, <clears throat> I told my mom I was number one in the classroom. My mom so was so proud about me, but I did not tell her that the principal, he put me in a classroom alone because I was troublemaker and there's no other student. So I was number one. 
Yeah, <laughs> and this remind me of Allah saying, I am the best of the creators, and the Muslim they say he is the only creator. So how he can be the best of the creators if there's no other creators? That is a false exaggeration of being the best. That is the most stupid best. So look at this, and this is Sahih Bukhari. What they will say, this is fabricated. This is I understand this is Sahih Bukhari, as you see. This person will not grow old until the day of judgment come. As simple as that. So, and the Muslim, they will start, you know, put duct tape there, put duct tape, with, you know. If this young boy live, he might not grow old till we'd see the last hour come to you. تقوم الساعة حتى تقوم الساعة Fix it. Duct tape. Try to improve it. Talk about Imam Al Mahdi. There is no such a thing, Imam Al Mahdi. This is a fiction. You Muslims are stupid. You know, you, you, all your religion is a fiction. Where, where is this guy, Al Mahdi? Where did he come from? Who is his father? Who is his mother? You, you know, even you do not know who is his father's name. Some Muslims they say his mother, her name is Nurjis. Some Muslims they say his mother's name is, is Maryam. And he is born from her thigh. And this guy, he has three balls. I mean, you, mental, mental religion. Who is this guy? And what he would do exactly? And if Al Mahdi is going to be bring guidance, does that mean Muhammad is not the last prophet? If he is the one who bring guidance, so what Muhammad did then? Is, is he a prophet? <laughs> Are we short of imams? We have Yasser, we have Yasser Qadi. <laughs> You know, uh, there's a Muslim, he was so proud about, he said to me, do you know about Ibn Battuta, the most famous historian before even Western, they went to America? I said, Ibn Battuta, he said, yeah, he said, Ibn Battuta is, is, is a historian. He said, yes. He said, he was a discovery person. I said, is that Ibn Battuta who he claimed that he went to an island and all the women in the island have a three, a three, <laughs> three breasts? <laughs> I want to go there. <laughs> Ibn Battuta. <laughs> I mean, the, I bet you this guy, he never went anywhere. This guy, he, he's a, he's, you know, he's an imaginary person. He start trying lies. And people, they don't know what he's talking about. This guy, he ride the wheel. You know, he take the turtle. You know, he saw women with three boobs. I mean, you name it, Ibn Battuta. Whatever he say, he say. He's the same as Muhammad. Look, look Muhammad, he claimed that there is an island and he learned, learned this from Ibn Battuta, maybe. <laughs> there is a, there is a woman, brother, sisters. The messenger said, "One day, one day, from the pulpit, when some people were selling." in the sea their food was finished an island appeared to them they went out seeking bread they were met by al jassas <whistles> the antichrist spy like what the heck that's mean that the antichrist has already exist the false messiah is already done and he is speaking about this happened before even him because this has happened already <laughs> the, the antichrist is spy i am the spy of the antichrist i say to abdul uh, as abu salama abu salama he uh, abu salami <laughs> salama salama hamburger what is a Jesus, a man? He replied, <laughs> a woman. I know it. I mean, come on, who can do best to do spy at you better than women? They knew everything. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do, they spy at you, man. Here we go. A woman trailing the hair of her skin 
and of her head she said in this castle he then narrated the rest uh, the rest number what okay hold on let me let me find different height hold on the, the, so we can read the whole story because here this is just uh, funny uh, let's see here look at this one look at this one now this one is longer this one would make it to 10 hours to read it what the heck hold on hold on uh. okay this one have have to do with anus okay the same story but here like the longer version of it uh, let us see where we start okay brother he sailed a ship along with 30 men of Bani Lakham and Bani Jadam and had been tossed by waves into the ocean for a month then these waves took them near the land within the ocean between two bracket island of the Caribbean at the same time of the sunset they sat in a small side boat and entered the island there was a beast with long thick hair and because of this they could not distinguish his face from his back Abdul the translation is a fraud it says that he was covered all of his body by hair including his anus the bruhu it says here read carefully <laughs> they don't know which one is his anus and which one is his front because he was covered by hair <laughs> a lot of hair this guy is a hairy hair and later we find that this is not a guy like what the heck all right so long hair thick hair and uh, you know they could not distinguish where is his anus from his uh, private part and then they said we to you who can you be? Thereupon it said, I am Al Jassasa. They said, like, what the heck? Al Jassasa? And it said, Oh, people, go to this person, he made Christian Prince, in the monastery as he is very much eager to know about you <laughs> he the narrator said when it named the person for us we were afraid of at least it should be the devil eh? mean the most they will say for sure this is a christian prince now then we hurriedly went until we come to the monastery and we found a well-built person ah this is, must be Mimi Hijab then a well-built person full of beef <laughs> he doesn't even have muscles he shaved his chest uh, hair before he take off his t-shirt he want to be a girly okay there will be hands tied to his neck and having iron shackles between his two legs up to his ankles like what the heck we said we we be upon you i like this one we said like we 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 upon you it took like like chinese like oh, oh you know who are you he said you would soon come to know about me but tell me who are you like what this is conversation they said to him who are you he said to them who are you this is a who are you conversation we said we are people of arabia 
We embark upon a boat, but the sea waves been driving us from one month. They thought brought us near the island, and we got into the tell me the whole story. And now we continue. And then it says here, and here a beast met us, and professorly thick hair uh, and because of the thickness of the, his hair and his face we could not distinguish his anus from his front we said we be to you who are you it said i am a jassasa we said what is a jassasa and it says you got to go to this person in the monastery. I mean, they have to repeat everything. You know, this guy, they have time, you know, at that time, they have time to repeat the story, you know. <laughs> a person saying, Alhamdulillah, I am a Muslim and I will die as a Muslim. Well, what I'm worried about you, my friend, that they will put a cork in your anus. Do you know that? Go check with your mosque and tell them why they put a cork in your anus when you die. Alhamdulillah, I will die as a Muslim. <laughs> and there is a two angels will come to you in the grave, and they will ask you three questions, and they will ask you who is who is who is uh, who is your God. If you don't say Allah, they will hit you with the hammer, and they will show you a picture of Prophet Muhammad. Who is this guy? If you don't say well, this is a Christian prince, they will hit you with the hammer. <laughs> What a stupid religion. Are you there, Mr. Mahdi? Here we go. We are going to come to the Mahdi story now. Anyway, uh, you know, and look, those guys, their island is where? Look, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's continue. So we came to you in a hot hast, fearing that might be the devil. He between two bracket, the chained person said, tell me about the date palm tree of the basin. We said, what about what aspect of their you seek information, huh? Look, the Muslims are do, they're smart. They will not give information for free. He said, I ask you whether these three bear fruit or not. We said, yes, yes, uh, it bear fruit. Supposedly now they did not answer him. <laughs> I think uh, these would not bear fruit. He said, inform me about the lake of Tabaria. Like what the heck, the lake of Tabaria in Israel? We are in the island of the middle of the ocean and now in Tabaria? Hey, Netanyahu is happy. He will open a hotel there. Just wait. He will tell the Muslims, it's mentioned by your prophet, and the Jassasa is there, and Tabaria, you have to come and visit it. We said, which aspect do you want to know? He said, if there is a water in it? Look, what the heck? It's called lake. So what is going to be inside it? Huh? Like, hey, Abdul, Abdul. The lake of Tabaria. The guy is asking if there is water in it. I mean, where the intelligence is imported from to the Abdul. The lake of Tabaria. Look at look at the question. The guy won't answer. The lake of Tabaria. There is water in it. So why we call it lake? <laughs> Guys, it is a 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and I said to myself, let me go live for 20 minutes. <laughs> I hate it. Honestly, my back hurting me. I'm sitting in the computer. Like this guy, he says to me, are you obsessed? I am obsessed with the stupidity. I mean, this is this is the best joke ever. One day I will die. I will have a heart attack literally from laughing. Look, I'm not able to sleep. From, you know, I go to sleep and I sometimes I laugh, honestly, in the dreams. Just remembering something Muhammad he said, or a Muslim he said something to me in a conversation. I mean, it is the most hilarious, stupid cult. You know, uh, 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 
I cannot even describe how stupid this cult is. The lake of Tabaria doesn't have water. We said, which aspect you don't want, you want to know? He said, is there water in it? They said, huh, it's abundance of water in it. <laughs> Thereupon he said, huh, okay, I think it would soon become dry. Like, what the heck? He again said, inform me about the spring of Zor. They said, which aspect is that discovery channel i mean those guys they are coming from arabia how they will know all this information what they have to do with tabaria what is that man What aspect you want to know, he said, the person in the chain. If there is water in it, and does it irrigate the land? We said, <laughs> yes, there is abundance of water in it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the one who is saying he is proud to be a Muslim. I have a question for you. Is the lake of Tabaraya have water in it? <laughs> because according to your prophet, it's going to be dry soon. <laughs> Do you see how soon it is? <laughs> uh, brother soon soon yeah soon mm -hmm. yeah soon how soon i mean now this area in the middle east is really dry by the way it's really dry i mean all the area but tabaria is still full of water <laughs> i mean you see imagine if tabaria dried you know it's gone the muslim they will say allahu akbar allahu akbar brother but until now it's full of water what we would do and then it says here, tell me, okay, abundance of water and its inhabitants of Medina, irrigate the land, okay. He said, inform me about the idiot prophet. You see, he's translating the illiterate. It says, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> what has he done look what the heck see guys listen carefully now so this those muslims they are saying the antichrist has already came in the time of muhammad this is the this is the antichrist he's existed at the time of muhammad and now he have a spy spy her name is a jassasa and by the way this jassasa which is very funny we will find it in different chapter in the quran you know where where uh, uh, uh Allah will send the beast from the ground, and this beast, as a Jassasa, is going to have the stick of Moses and the ring of Solomon. And tell me about the enlisted prophet. What has he done? We said, hmm, has come to from out of Mecca, and he is settled in Yathrib. Okay. He said, do the Arab fight against him? This guy, he knew everything. We said, yes. How did he deal with them? We informed him that he had overcome those who they in his neighborhood and they have submitted themselves before him. So he submitted himself before him. Thereupon he said, Huh, okay. Has it actually happened? What the heck? We said yes. Thereupon he said, Hmm. If it is so, that is better. 
for them that they should show obedience to him. I am going to tell you about myself. Like, what the heck? Who are you now? I am the Dajjal, who would be soon permitted to get out, and so I shall get out and travel in the land. Hey, soon. You see, soon? Soon. During the lifetime of Muhammad, the Antichrist will come. Hmm. And I will not spare any town where I would not stay for 40 nights except Mecca. This is Alibaba, by the way. I'm telling you, this is Alibaba. I met him before. Alibaba and the 40 thieves. I mean, you like the story or not? By the way, if you don't like the story, the prophet said, we will shoot you. <laughs> Who dare to say, I don't like it? <laughs> <laughs> once, once, uh, you know, once a, a, a big shake, he was saying, uh, the amazing thing about Prophet Muhammad that nobody questioned what he's saying, and then a young teenage Muslim he said to him. I have a question about him. He said, shut up. <laughs> we just said nobody question about him. <laughs> nobody question about him. This is the most amazing thing about Prophet Muhammad, because the second you ask questions, they will kill you. Shut up. Brothers and sisters. Oh, Zachary Nayak is ringing. Christian Prince. The most amazing way to be prophet. That nobody question what he say. Because what he say is very truthful. So, Zachar, uh, I have a question. I just told you, the prophet is amazing. And nobody question about him. Wait, but I have a question. Can I... Put, 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 put him down. Nobody can question him because he was amazing. That's it. You know, and the, and the world is very stupid. One plus one plus one is equal to one. Stupid. You know the, Your mathematics is wrong, so we can teach it in school. Hmm. Christian Prince is feeling hell like last man standing his challenge. Jenny Muslims. My friend, what last man? Last man, don't you see? All those people are I am the last man. <laughs> Everybody is laughing at my <laughs> even your Muslim is laughing at him. This is why you say whatever we show you, you say this is naive. <laughs> this is rejected. This is not accepted. Why? Because you are laughing at him. The last man is standing is dead, my friend. Muhammad is not a man even. He could not even make his wife have orgasm. I mean, come on. A dog can make his wife have orgasm. Muhammad, he could not. What is the power of Allah? And what is this story about? So Antichrist, he have now he have chain between his legs. The guy who can cut the earth to pieces, he cannot cut the chain. The guy who can cut a human being from the top to the bottom and he put him together by one order, he cannot cut the chain. He never heard of the welding machine. Can't he go to Alibaba or Amazon and buy something to cut it? Like, hello? So this is what is stopping him now, the two chain in his feet. <laughs> uh, uh, do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? So this guy now, he is the Antichrist and he is a uh, he have a chain in his feet, he cannot go, and he exists before in the time of Muhammad.
No, Muhammad is a fraud, obviously. And he said, soon, I'm coming to you and I will kill everybody, talking to people in front of him. Hmm. Do we have any Abdul want to say anything? So, you know, when the Muslim they say that they found Muhammad in the Old Testament or, you know, we laugh. Obviously, you could not find him in the Quran, so you try to find him in our book. And the same time, that's obviously mean that our book is not really corrupt because why in the world you are trying to find a proof about your prophet in a corrupted book? You Muslims not only don't make sense, you're idiots. You have no idea what you are doing. You're just supporting us, actually. And, uh, uh, you know, when we say that Muhammad is a prophet, shouldn't we prove first that Muhammad is a prophet? Every prophecy Muhammad, he said, it's fairly, it's fairly failure. This hadith is increase your iman. Oh, that's good for you. May Allah make your penis endless then. When a person, he says to me, I believe in Islam, you believe that Allah is a God, he will make your endless, your penis endless. This promise alone is the most stupid promise ever. Because if your penis six foot or it is 600 million mile, what difference is going to make? And what the point if your wife is next to you? How you can I even have sex with her? Stupidity is amazing. You believe, you know, you believe. Yeah. So the man, he died and he was standing for you. I believe you, I believe. Okay, believe. He left as a donkey, never came back as a horse. Suleiman, he have a ring and he controlled the genie and the word by it. Suleiman, brother, he went to the bathroom. And then, brother, he left his ring with his wife, Ajarada. Satan, he come to the wife of Suleiman. And he come to the wife of Suleiman and he looked like Suleiman. Look, what the heck? Listen carefully, it can happen to you too. When you go to the bathroom, don't give your ring or your credit card specifically to your wife. Because Shaitan will come to the wife and he will look like you. And he will take your credit card. Mm -hmm. So all the drama, the drama happened because of the bathroom. Me, myself, I will take the bathroom. I will take, <laughs> I will not take the ring to the bathroom. I will take the, the bathroom for the ring. <laughs> So the guy, he gave his wife that ring, and then, brother, uh, the shaitan, he came, and he took the ring, and he became the king. And then the, uh, the shaitan, when he became Suleiman, you know what he did? Are you there, Abdullah? He started effing the wives of Suleiman as never before. Excuse my language. Boom, 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 boom. And this is how he got busted. The wives of Prophet Suleiman, may Allah bless him, they notice that the penis of the husband is not like before at all. His penis never go limp and never sleep. He never even snore. He don't take a break. This guy then stop. Her husband, can I take? Next. So the wives, Abdullah, I challenge you to say this is a lie. I can show you the reference. The wives, they went to the elders and they told them, what happened to our husband? Something fizzy. He keep effing non-stop. The elder, they said, what? Non-stop? Aha! Uh -huh. He must be Satan. Then Satan, when he learned that they get him busted, he ran away. Look at the stupidity. If he controlled the whole kingdom by a ring, why he would run away? <laughs> If the guy he controlled the whole world by his ring, why you will run away? <laughs> and the brother, uh, who remember how Suleiman he found his ring? Who remember? Let us see how many of you remember the story. 
Who remember how Suleiman he found the ring? Hey Abdullah, can you can I call you and tell me how Suleiman found the ring? Is it true that Suleiman he found it inside the fish? <laughs> so brother, Shaitan when he ran away after he f all the wife of the Prophet and they discovered that his penis is not a human penis, it's so good. So he ran away and he threw the ring in the ocean. Okay? So when he threw the ring in the ocean, a fish ate it, okay? And then Suleiman, after he was kicked from the palace, he started working as a porter. Porter, not hori porter, porter, like the one who carries stuff in the port. So a porter, porter. So uh, there, there is a guy, he bought fish. Suleiman, he told him, how, what you will give me if I carry the fish for you to your house? Poor Suleiman, he was a king and now he is a hori porter. The guy, he said, okay, I will give you a fish. Suleiman said, okay. So he carried the fish for this guy and he went with him home. And then at the door, the guy, he grabbed one fish or two fish and he gave it to Suleiman. Suleiman, he went to the kitchen because he needed to eat the fish. He's hungry. Come on. All of us, we eat fish, don't we? So Suleiman would eat fish too. Fishy fish. He opened the fish and he found his ring. And this is how Suleiman become the king. Now, who is a Muslim who say this is not a true story? Can a Christian even can deny it? Nobody can deny such a story. It must be from God. Nobody. 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 Nobody know, nobody know, nobody know, nobody. Da -da -da. Man, that is so beautiful a story. If you want to read more about the story and the ring of Solomon, I will give you a link just for your entertainment. Who won the link? Save it and laugh. For sure it's a true story. What's wrong with you? Show respect, man. You know what? I will tell you a true story now. This is this is definitely true. There's there's a person, there's a person, he made fun of the stories of Prophet Muhammad. Do you know what happened to him? He woke up up he woke up in the morning, he found himself look like Christian Prince. And this is a true story. You know? Imagine that happened to you, may Allah forbid. So for sure it's true story, so respect. The account of Suleiman. Here speaking about the flying the flying carpet, by the way. They start speaking about the flying carpet. And then they speak about the flying horse. And then if we go, let us say, let us search for the ring. Hold on. Suleiman army was about 10 barsakh. 3,500 3, mile long. <laughs> How long? Hey, Abdul, don't you think this is short? <laughs> thousand five hundred mile long are you sure <laughs> and look they have the percentage too 25 percent they were a human uh -huh. and 25 percent they were genie like what the heck and then 25 percent they are from the desert animal like what and then 25 percent they are birds <laughs> <laughs> this guy of all the garbage we said all what he's worried about the Imam Mahdi <laughs> I mean who can beat this stupidity 
all this garbage in front of you, you are worried about the Mahdi? Abdul is stupid. The, the Antichrist we just showed you, he was exist in the time of Muhammad. And the Antichrist is supposed to come after the Mahdi. <laughs> So how he was exist at the time of Muhammad and soon will come out, but yet he will come after the man. <laughs> Just shut up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 25% of his army is birds. What, what is that we make, by the way? Why do they give us numbers? Like, if it is uh, 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 Muslims, his army is 3,500 mile long. Uh, how wide? <laughs> Maybe it's one man lined up like, like ants. <laughs> and then, brother. Okay. 1,000 houses of a glass. Houses of a glass? We are made above the world. In them, 300 wives, 700 slave girls left. Suleiman used to order a strong wind to lift the house and order the soft wind to move the house slowly. Therefore, Allah revealed to him when he was between the heaven and the earth. I have increased your kingship in such a way that if anybody speak in any part of your kingdom, the wind will make his conversations reach toward you. Brother, if a guy, he was kissing his wife in the darkness of the night, saying to her, can you take off your panty? Suleiman will hear. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if a wife, she said to her husband, did you just fart it? Suleiman will hear it. Because anyone speak in the kingdom, the conversations will come to Suleiman. That's deep. That's really deep. I mean, that's really, really deep shit. You know, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> if, uh, like, what the heck was this, man? I mean, this is endless comedy. When I'm going to go to sleep, it's already 3.28 in the morning. Oh boy, my back hurting me. Already I was for three, four hours in the uh, in the morning, and now I'm I did not sleep yet. Three twenty-eight in the morning. What the heck? Okay, the Talabi Talabi narrated that when Suleiman traveled on immovable equipment, he used to take along with his household, his army and servant. His accountant and his scribe, they used to sit in the roof next to each other at one corner. <laughs> at one corner, at the roof. <laughs> Oh boy. <sighs> Thank God that Joe Biden is not Suleiman. <laughs> Otherwise, we will find Pelosi in the corner of his roof <laughs> and his house is flying in the White House. <laughs> mm. Hey, Joe Biden, did you see those people sitting in the corner of your roof, man? <laughs> who you, know, you were talking about who? Nancy Balusi? She's there. <laughs> so everybody, his household, his army, his servant, his accountant, his scribe, they use the army, which is 3,500 3, mile long, will sit in the corner of his roof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It's really cold, but the story making me sweat. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, somebody, his name is YZY. Are you a Muslim YZ, my friend? Because I want to know if I want to take you seriously. Is your comment is a serious uh, comment? Guys, let me show you what y, YUZ. Muslim are trying to change the topic. <laughs> All right, my friend. Then let me confirm to me, please, if you are a Muslim. How you will explain the embryo in the Quran if only a few hundred years ago scientists discovered it with microscope? How will the Quran know about about it thousands of years ago? Uh, my friend uh, uh, www.net. Do you know even what the Quran says about the embryo? Let me show you just to, for a laugh. We will go back to Salima, guys. <laughs> Just to show you that the one who wrote the Quran <laughs> is a donkey what's come to the embryo. <laughs> How he discovered it? The Quran discovered it, brother? That's deep. As I know, the Quran made poo poo when it's come to this topic. Here we go, brother. Here we go. Are you ready? This is your silly Quran. I call you the Quran. Allah made the sperm into dead blood. Is that what science says? Sperm transform into dead blood? This is what they told you? And the clot of a blood became a lump. <laughs> Shall we continue or enough? <laughs> the stupid Muhammadi notice that women there when they have abortion, they give you know they they like uh, there's a lot of blood will come like you know like uh, you know uh, let us say a leftover of a child maybe sometime. So the stupid Muhammadi thought this is what we what happened. The sperm we put the sperm in, we have a baby coming out. <laughs> we have a blood coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and not to forget to mention that Muhammad he said that you will be collected in the in the belly of your mother as a sperm as a semen for 40 days <laughs> oh boy the prophet how the prophet he knew that thousand of years ago how how brother It must be from God, the messenger of Allah, the truthful and the receiver of the truth. By the way, the Prophet is a receiver of the truth. Not only he provided truth, he received it too. You know, in those who have a, <clears throat> a radio, it's called repeater. <laughs> he received the truth, informed us, saying. The creation of the human is gathered in the form of semen in the womb of your mother for 40 days. Is that what science says to us? That we are collected as semen for 40 days? <laughs> the, womb, the, the, the womb collecting semen? Hey womb, do you want more semen or you have enough for today? 40 days because we have to give you semen for like... You have to have sex every day boo, 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 for 40 days to make a baby. <laughs> and the womb, brother, the more you put semen, the womb take it and collect it. The, the, you know, they don't, uh, you know, they put it together because after 40 days, the semen, the collected semen will become a baby. I don't know, according to Prophet Gogol, peace be upon him, that semen can live to the maximum of five days. This is what Google, Prophet Google said, according to scientific science. So who is the donkey told you about science? And did you say microscope? Did you say microscope? I think the one who told you that he was taking a lot of dope. <laughs> How many of you here are new? If you are new, I feel sorry for you. I will tell you why. 
First, you will be addicted. This is the first thing will happen to you. You come to here five minutes. You know, once <clears throat> once I receive a message, this was uh, in Pato. Uh, I receive a message saying to me, Christian Prince, for the sake of God, because of you, we are going to get divorced. I look at the message. What the heck is that? It says, it's a guy. I know him. He, he he's speaking in, in uh, to me sometime, like when we talk in the chat room. So what are you talking about? It, was, it turned to be his wife. So his wife, she is telling me, please stop letting my husband come to listen to you. He don't sit with us. When he eats lunch, he is eating, to, listening to you. When it is dinner, he is eating, listening to you. When it is, I cannot even have talking to talk to him. So I told him, listen, listen, potato. From now on, you sit only two hours. I will, I will honestly, I would, I would like a timer. The second he entered the chat room, because there you can bounce him, you can kick him out. Not like here, you can, you can here you can block a person, but still he can hear you. But in the chat room, I kick him out. That's it. He cannot enter. So I put two hours maximum. <laughs> the guy is going to get divorced <laughs> because of me. <laughs> She said, he want to take a shower, he's listening to you. He is in the lunch, he is listening to you. you know, he, 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 do something, please help us. I don't hate you, but this is too much. I said, okay, 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 take it easy, take it easy, take it easy. So if you are new, I just give you a warning. Take it easy. Now, do we have any Muslim have a respond to the microscope which is discovered by Allah 1400 years ago? <laughs> Christian Prince, how you can explain? Look, look, look. Let me, let me put, I mean, the guy, this is what he told him. I don't blame him, but this is what they told him. But my friend, when somebody says something to you, shouldn't you check it out? I mean, what if somebody, whatever religion, he said to me something, shouldn't I check it out? So I am assuming that you are an adult, mature person, and you have a brain, you are smart. So when a Muslim, he says that to you, why you did not check it out and see if it's true or not? Muhammad is the most certified, well-known idiot in the world. Muhammad, as an example, he explained how the baby looked like the parents. Which, by the way, is true. <laughs> according, according to Muhammad, <laughs> if the woman have orgasm first, the baby will look like her. <laughs> if the man have orgasm, which means he will be a female. And if the man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. That is steep. How the prophet knew that. I want each one of you now, look at your parents. Actually, you don't need to look. If you are a male, obviously your father come first. Hello? If you are a female, obviously your mother come first. Clinging thing, there's no word in the Quran says a clinging thing. This is false. Alaqa is the congealed blood, not clinking thing. Alaqa is something can uh, actually, uh, you see, when you you have a cut in your skin and then there's a dead blood, the black thing, this is alaqa. This is not a clinking thing. This is a, this is a lie. You see, the Quran did not say like a clinking thing. The Quran says that sperm will be transformed into alaqa. And all of us, we knew that even that clinking thing is the egg, it's not the sperm. The Quran make it clear that the one will be transformed. It is the semen. <clears throat> anyway, stupidity is amazing. Shall we go back to the story of uh, Suleiman? Suleiman? So 3,500 uh, 3, 3, mile of army, they sit in the corner of the roof. Not only that, all the kingdom, all the kingdom, the ministers, the servants, the war, everybody sit in the corner of the roof. How big this roof is? If the army alone is a 3,000, 
500 mile long how big the roof of Solomon brother honestly prophet Muhammad is telling the truth now let us take a look at the kitchen of Suleiman the kitchen of Suleiman also used to be with him having a large vessel in which at the time 120 camels could be cooked okay I mean that makes sense so his army is a 305,000 mile long sitting in the roof and yet he have only 120 camels to feed them <laughs> Sorry for his army, man. So they are sitting in the roof and the whole kingdom, 3,500 3, long military sitting in the roof. And yet, Suleiman, look how cheap he is, man. Cooking only 120 camel. <laughs> and there it says, in front of there was a ground of ground, uh, uh, what? Uh, Quar, quad, quadrupeds. I don't know how to pronounce this word. What does word mean? I don't know. Where he they used to gaze. A chef were busy in cooking, and the artisan busy in the craft, and the horses were tied in the front of him, in the uh, and the passat were flying. <laughs> One day, he traveled from the outer skirts of Shiraz. Shiraz in Iran? Suleiman was here? Like, what the heck? Toward Yemen, like what? He went, to, he was living from Shiraz. He wasn't Persian. Toward Yemen and past the Medina. Look, he was, he fly over the Medina. He said, hello Medina. At that time there was Medina. Suleiman said, this is the place of al <laughs> of the last prophet. <laughs> what a good person he is he. Hold on. What a good person is he? The guy is not even born yet. Uh, uh, anyway. <clears throat> he who will believe in him and follow him when he was passing in Mecca, he saw the idols in the at the Kaaba, around the Kaaba. On seeing Suleiman, the Kaaba started weeping. <laughs> Allah asked Kaaba why it was weeping. The Kaaba was weeping. Sorry, not Suleiman. The Kaaba started weeping, brother. Brother, this is normal. The Kaaba started weeping. Why? Because Suleiman is flying in the sky. Ah, okay. Allah, he said to the Kaaba, why you are weeping, huh? I didn't know Allah. I do not know why the Kaaba is weeping because Allah is ignorant, as you know. The Kaaba, she said to Allah, O Creator, one of your prophet and his people passed by me. Neither did it stop nor perform prayer near me. <laughs> what a true story, by the way. This is a true story. <laughs> Shall I read the whole story? If we continue, we will die laughing, literally. Oh boy. <clears throat> An army in the length of 3,500 miles sitting in the corner of the roof of Suleiman. And then if you go down, I mean, if you want to read about the ring, uh, I gave you the page. You can just search for the word ring. And you can start from there. Otherwise, the, the comedy is long, you know. The comedy is extremely long. Suleiman Ring had the following inscription Purified is the Lord who has controlled the genie of this world. Okay. Hmm. And then, you know, you can read more just for fun. Okay, let us see where is the ring story continue. Where is the story coming from? Here we go, here. 
Okay, here the story about Suleiman. He go to the bathroom. <laughs> Honest to God, my back hurting me. I need to go. I better go. <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> I can't breathe from laughing. I cannot even sit. My 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 chest is hurting from laughing. My back is hurting from sitting. All of this because Prophet Muhammad is an endless comedy. And then the Muslim, they want to find Muhammad in Isaiah 42. <laughs> Why you did not find him here? <laughs> All right, my friends, we better stop here. Otherwise, okay, hold on, hold on. This is where Suleiman, he did the fish. You see the story I told you about the fish? Hold on, look, look. Okay, uh, so Suleiman, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you can hear, see it, like, uh, so the guy, he said to him, Suleiman, he said to him, shall I help you and uh, return and return of two fish? The man agreed, so Suleiman, he helped him. Uh, in catching the fish, so here he is catching, not carrying, but different story he's carrying. The fisherman gave him two fishes as his wages. Suleiman thanks Allah when he cut open the fish, he found the ring in the stomach of the fish. <laughs> and look what happened. He kept it aside and thanks Allah. Then he cleaned the fish and brought it home. The wife become very what what wife he left his wife in the in the, the this is the king he have hundreds of wives what wife he cleaned the fish and brought it home the wife became so happy and said I wish to call my parents and show them that you have worked hard and earned sustenance and this fish was cooked and Suleiman called his in laws and they ate from the fish so the whole family came to eat from the fish because it's a big fish. And then from Suleiman, Suleiman said to them, Would you recognize me? They said, No, we haven't seen you at all. Suleiman took out the ring and wear it. And at the moment, all the birds and the jinn come to him and become obedient to him, acknowledging his kingship. You see what a ring can do? Do you see what a ring can do? You better start fishing from now on, especially men. Like now here, because here, by the way, is that control only the genie and the birds? What about women? I mean, if there's a way I can get this ring and I can keep them away. <laughs> he controls right away the guy he put the ring and the birds they start flying from everywhere sparrow not not uh, captain sparrow and the guy no just ever sparrows uh, pigeons uh, uh, you know all kind of birds and animals they come from everywhere and they acknowledge him which means they bow down to him he's, he's the king of the jungle in Amazon you know okay and then he brought his wife along with her parents to the city of Istikhar and uh, all his uh, Shias, the are Shia, <laughs> gathered around him and become very happy. The difficulties of his abstinence vanished. He ruled for a long period. When the day of the death approached, he appointed Asif of Nuburakhia by the order of Allah to his sex. So, this guy, his name is Asif, he's an Arab. He became the leader of, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, his followers follow, refer to Asif, solve their problem. Okay, uh, yeah. But uh, the story, by the way, this is a different version of it. Here we go. He helped the fisherman and he gave him two fish. All right, yeah. <clears throat> Here is a different story. 
narrated from Imam as sadiq blah, 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 the kingship of Suleiman was hidden in his ring. All the kingship of Suleiman in his ring, his power. Whenever he used to wear it, the genie, the human, the birds, the animals, they obey him. Okay, you know what? I got a ring from Amazon. Uh, by the way, I don't like to wear any of those things. But I will try this ring. I think this ring is going to work. I have many proof. I tried it already. Lord of the Rings. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. And then they come to you and they say to you, Science in the Quran. True story. <clears throat> now we get an idea that, I mean, those who claim that they wrote a book about the Lord of the Ring, they are stealing the information from somewhere. From somewhere. <clears throat> By the way, Muhammad is a stupid idiot. All those stories the Jews, they tell to their kids. So it already exists. Now, the Muslim for sure, they add some spices to it, but most of those stories are really exist, but they are just fairy tales. But because Muhammad is a fraud, he added, he took it seriously, and he considered it to be a serious story to believe in, claiming that his God is the one who told him these stories. The same story about the ant when Suleiman he went in the valley. The same story about the, the uh, there's there's a book it's called the uh, the Legion of the Jews. You can download it for free. It's for free, you know. Uh, uh, you can read tons of stories the Jews they have and Muhammad have it in the Quran. But those are legions. So the foolish man, this foolish man, whatever the Jews they say to him, he take it. As an example, once a woman she came to Muhammad. And she spoke about the punishment of the grave. This Jewish woman, when she said that, Aisha, she said to him, she said to her, uh, <clears throat> that's a stupid, that's a lie. So they start arguing. Muhammad, he came from his room. Uh, he heard the Jewish woman saying that. Oh, sorry, he, he, he heard them fighting over, over something. So he asked, what is the problem? Uh, Aisha, she said, uh, well, this woman, she told me, she is, you know, he know her, she is a Jew. She told me that there is a punishment in the grave. And then Muhammad, he confirmed that. Let me see if I can find the, the original story of the Hadith, uh, who, how they argue. Even they shout like, you know, they were fighting. Yeah, we can find it. It's not really. So Aisha, she did not believe. And then Muhammad, and even the Hadith says, and since Muhammad, since that in our incident, Muhammad, he never stopped saying, I seek refuge by Allah from the portion of the grave. So Muhammad never mentioned this before. This is why Aisha, she is, you know, fighting, arguing with the Jewish women about it. Where is the hadith? Let me turn off the screen so you guys you don't have doesn't hurt your eyes. I'm just trying to look around. Like this, the search engine is not really easy to find things. <clears throat> Let us see. Here we go. See here, you see, Aisha is not only arguing, she said to her, you are a liar. You are lying. Why Aisha is saying that? Because she never heard 
if her husband ever mentioned this, she would never say you are lying. Okay, so the Jewish woman, she came to Aisha. She said to her that there is a torment in the in the grave uh, because of urine. Because of what? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a shitty. <laughs> And Muhammad later he says yes it's because of urine so he starts saying that the most of the punch of the grief is because of urine okay so I said I should say it you are lying she said no it's true we cut our skin and our clothes because of it the Messenger of Allah went out uh, to pray and our voices become loud they are arguing so he said what is this so I told him she had said he said she spoke the truth and look what happened and after that he never offered any prayer but he said following the prayer may Allah you know we seek your aid against the portion of the grave but look he never said that before so after he, this conversation happened Muhammad he adds something to his prayer do you see how the fraud work Do you see how the flood work? How come Muhammad they never mentioned it before? The Jewish woman she came, she mentioned it. Muhammad liked the idea. He take whatever the Jews said as 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 for granted. I mean, do we need even a proof more than this? Even she is saying after that day, you see, before that day he never mentioned it. After that day. He never offered any prayer without saying we seek refuge from the God of this and this and this from the fire and the torment of the grave. Before that, he never mentioned it. Fraud. Scumbag. He heard the Jewish woman she saying whatever the Jews they said, he take it for granted. All right. And yet the Muslims are trying to find Muhammad in the book of Isaiah. The majority of hellfire or torment in the grave is pissing because of pissing. It must be true. I mean, come on, who, how the prophet he knew this before discover the microscope? <laughs> and look, exactly as the woman she said that the punishment of the grave because of urine, Muhammad he starts saying the same. exactly the same urination is the main cause of the punishment of the grave prophet said authentic this is what the woman she just said he never mentioned it before the woman she said Muhammad he take it the Muslim repeat it and now we have a religion it's called Islam. So my friend, for the desperate Muslims who are trying to find a place for their prophet, get busy with urination, because it looks like, uh, I mean, urine is the problem, which is very, really, really funny that the prophet, he ordered you to drink urine, but yet because of urine, you will be tortured in the grave. Oh boy. Hmm. All right, I think we have enough for today. And if you did not save the links we showed you, you can play the text again. You can show the reference we showed you. And anytime, by the way, if you want to search for a reference we are showing the screen, you can do a very simple method. You can freeze the video. Freeze the video. And you can say, that you can like uh, type exactly a few words in the search engine of this website. Like now, I just put this hadith in the screen. So, if I am going to search for it, I don't know where this hadith is located because you might watch the video in different channels. We did not post link. So what you do, you write the same, you type the same exact words or let us say a few words next to each other in the search engine, you will find the reference. First of all, why you want to have a punishment in the grave anyway? Now, this is just stupid. What what do you think where is your grave? You are dead now. Uh, how you will be punished in the grave? That is a very silly idea. So what's the day of judgment then? In the grave? The guy is dead. 
How you can punish that person? He will, he's dust. And even if he is not dust, how you can punish him? He's dead. It's very silly, stupid. So to assume that somebody is going to be punished in the grave, that means he is alive. So is he dead or alive? Because you cannot punish a dead person who have no sense. He cannot feel anything. Somebody saying, why you don't do video in Arabic? My friend, because in Arabic, there's many people doing, you know, you have TV stations, you have Father Zakaria, you have Brother Rashid, you have many. In English, there's not, there's very few, and not all of them, they are doing good, actually. Because most of people, they are speaking English against Islam, they don't speak Arabic, they don't know Arabic. So the Muslim, they can fool around with the Arabic thing. So here in English, we are more needed than somebody speaking Arabic. And you as a person who speak Arabic, you do not even need me or Father Zakaria. You know, you have access to the books, read it. Right? The one who speak the language of the garbage of Islam, he do not need any help actually, because you have a first hand access, easy. You speak it, you read it, you have the books, just do some search. And today you are lucky. We know when I was a kid, I used to walk long distance just to go to the library. And then when I go to the library, they don't allow me to enter the section for adult. So I wait until an adult person when I enter the adult section, and then I walk next to him, acting as if I am his like his son. The guy he look at me like, why this guy? Why this kid is walking next to me? Because they want to look at me. Look at me. So just to read a book, I have to struggle to do so. And actually, when I go in, I cannot even choose a book. I go sit in the table next to the guy who I walk next to him and people usually leave a book in the table. Whatever book is left there, I grab it. Today, you have the internet in your phone. You can read even in the bathroom. You can search and find millions of books. You are lucky in our time we have nothing. Literally nothing. If you could not get the real book, knowledge is impossible. And if you read all those books, you have to be rich, really. Because how you wanna, and you know, I grew up in a Christian family, so why my family, they would have all Islamic books? They will not, which make it more hard for me even to learn. Because my family, they will not even allow such a stupid book to enter the house. Uh, so, today, for you as a person who speak Arabic, it's very easy. And even those who don't speak Arabic, you know, today we are making it easier for them because we are the one who speak Arabic and we give them the, the, the correct information. And now you see even those websites, few years ago, they are not exist. I used to translate everything in Arabic. Me, myself, I have to do it. Right now, we at least now we have a website. We can find the hadith translated by Muslims. They lie sometimes in the translation, but at least it's there. So here we have better duty to do than speaking to those who speak Arabic. Kabich? <clears throat> yeah, today, I mean, knowledge is easy. Still, people are stupid. Which mean that it's not how easy it is. You know, when the Chinese, they said you cannot make, you know, he left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. That's mean, it doesn't matter really how easy it is. You cannot make a donkey a horse. Doesn't matter what the time is, what is a century, what is the technology. A donkey will stay a donkey. There is many people they spend their life doing nothing except party, drinking, sleeping, you know, doing popo. And then 60, 70, 80 years of their life goes and nobody remembers them. Why? Because they spend their life the same as the rest, doing popo. They will go with their popo. But there is people who will be remembered forever. No matter what you can do, no matter what you try. There is people who wrote books a thousand years ago, today will read their books, those will be remembered. At that time, there was no YouTube. Trans, you know, information transformed through books only. Today, there's more ways, but I believe still books is the best way. However, you as a person, you can decide what you want to be. You want to be just a number, nobody will remember. Or you want to be a person 
who everybody will remember you. There's two ways to be remembered. Either you are good or you are evil. Because you can be remembered too by being evil like Muhammad. So it's not just being remembered. It's about being remembered for the good you did and how many people you helped. Otherwise, you can be remembered by, you know, becoming the rapist of the century, if you want. Right? So we don't want to be that, and we don't want to do that. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope we have a good time together, and we have a good laugh. And don't forget to download my videos and share them with your friends. And until we see you again, Christ is Lord, Islam is a scam, and we prove it every day. And for the Muslims who they are desperate to find their prophet, if you could not find your prophet in your religion, how you can find him indifferent? That is very silly. Your prophet cannot be a prophet because all his prophecies come to be false. And I challenge any Muslim in the future, tomorrow, any day I come again, to call me and show me prophecies of your prophet come to be true. I know there's tons of videos about Muhammad became a prophet and his prophecies come true, but I challenge you, literally, to prove it to me and then everybody will see that it is a fraud all the prophecies of muhammad prove that he's a false prophet and this is why we use them against muslims against islam we do not need to look for something in the bible what muhammad said is enough to prove that muhammad is a fraud and today we give you some of the examples and they are horrible thank you all and we see you again god bless you have a great weekend and uh, we pray for the sick one uh, there's a there's a brother of uh, uh, you know I, I made a, pr a prayer request he's a very nice person his mother she is in the hospital so we pray for her to be fine and uh, to get healthy and there's one of you he said his brother-in-law he's uh, sick with a, uh, a heart attack or something like that we pray that this person he will be healed too uh, uh, always always remember that the Lord uh, he can do what is impossible but in the same rem same time remember that life and death, life and death, is a gift from God. He give it, he take it. So don't be sad and don't be unhappy. I will be sad only if a person I care for is not a believer. As simple as that. Otherwise, me, myself, I don't really care if I live for years or die now. Because it would not change anything. Time goes so fast, you would die anyway. But the important is, a death of a believer is not a death. It's just a start for better. So maybe you will miss the person if you go. Maybe he will not. you will not be happy if something wrong happened to a person you like or you love. But my friend, as long as the person is a believer, he is in a better place. You see, this is what, what Jesus does to us. Even death is a comfort. It's not something horrible. He is our comforter. So for a disbeliever, death is a horrible thing. For us, it's just a new start with better people and better places. Uh, so don't be too much attached to this earth, crying for it. And usually, actually, those who they are crying to live longer, they die faster. This is my experience in life. You seek something, that thing will run away from you. You seek money, you chase it. You will keep your life chasing it. You seek, uh, whatever you seek, it's going to run from you. If you run away from it, it's going to follow you. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Those who do not need money, money is come to them. Those who they are desperate for money, money will run away. Those who they seek love, love never come to them. Those who don't want it, love come to them. Those who want the women, uh, you know, women run away from them. Those who don't want, want the women go after them. This is how life works. So my friend, don't seek. Something is not going to stay anyway. There's one thing will stay. The Lord, he says, the one who knock at my door, I will open for him. So here there's nobody will run away from you. This is the only person you seek, and what you seek is going to be granted. The rest is going to be the opposite. Don't let 
your desire decide your journey let your journey decide your desire which means you decide where journey will be where you want to go what is your desire not let the desire to lead me whatever desire I want because desires can be stupid sometimes desire can be uh, you know sex can be money can be all kind of desire but there is a journey if we make a decision where my journey will be what is the purpose of my journey then I am in control of my desire because my journey comes first and desire have to fit with my journey. But if I make my journey based on the desire, that means I don't know where I'm going. Whatever desire goes, I have the desire. So just be sure of what you want, be consistent, and choose the door you want to knock out. That is where you need to know. So I want to say thanks again, and uh, leave your comment. And if you are a Muslim, invite your sheikh, those guys who were speaking, they are welcome to call me. Even they are an idiot, but no problem. Idiots are welcome. They are the best feed of comedy. God bless you. Have a great weekend. And we pray for all the sick to be healthy. Take care. Bye-bye.